Tommy Boyd now. 0171 412 1152. There's this line in Faulty Towers, right? It's the one where he's in hospital and um, he's banged his head. Basil's in hospital and he's banged his head. And the staff nurse, I think she is, who's a, a full-sized woman, uh, but quite mumsy, quite matronly, a bit bossy, though, uh, comes in to, to see him and to try and get him to go to sleep. And because he's had a bang on the head, but only because he's had a bang on the head, as she takes hold of his head and tries to relax... Have you seen this episode? I think it's the one with the Germans. Uh, he looks up into her eyes, and do you know what he says? And it is the most arresting thing I've ever seen in a sitcom. He says, My God, you're ugly. And it's an extraordinary line, sat where it is sat, because it's not funny, and it's not witty. And it doesn't even really get a laugh if you listen to the studio audience because everybody goes, oh, my God. We were talking about truth earlier on in the programme and, and how it's important sometimes to lie. And we try and tell the truth. We tell our children they should tell the truth. We, want, we say to our colleagues, you will tell me, won't you, you know, if I'm getting it wrong. We do want the truth, but the last thing, I promise you, I think the last thing we want the truth about is our looks. Isn't it? You could never, ever tell anybody that they were ugly. We tell people they're beautiful all the time. We tell, our, we tell the person we've chosen to spend our life with on, 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 almost on an hourly basis that they're lovely, that they look beautiful. You know, getting ready to go, not just who are willing to go to. And, and she comes downstairs and she's actually run a comb over her hair and you go, you look lovely. Could I tell my wife she's ugly? Could, no. But what is ugly? See... Ugly is very interesting. First of all, I have a theory about why that line is in Faulty Towers, and I wonder whether you share it. I think that Basil Faulty put... John, please, put it in there. Put that line into the thing, because he wrote it. Because he feels like being honest and saying to a lot of people, my God, you're ugly. And the only chance he ever got to say to somebody, my God, you're ugly, is if he put the line in a sitcom. And he got away with it. But ugly is interesting. I feel sorry for women when it comes to ugly. Because... My experience is that if you are a man and you are ugly, you are considered distinguished. Charles Aznavour, I rest my case. Great many American film stars. Telly Savalas. Telly Savalas may or may not have been a decent actor, but he was a hideous SOB, wasn't he? And yet he was the number one television sex symbol for about eight years. Telly Savalas, bald, great big nose, ears, jumbo ears, you know, hideous hideous. A woman, however, has only to deviate slightly from the, the, the Western fixation of what a beautiful woman is, and um, we just go, mm, a dog, which is, which is a terrible thing. It's a terrible shame. So what are we talking about this morning? We're talking about honesty. We were talking about honesty through the breakfast show one way or another. We interviewed a psychologist. If you're listening about quarter to eight, we interviewed a psychologist who's got a book out called Hiding What We Feel and Faking What We Don't. And if I think I understand the book right, her advice is that you ought to lie a little bit from time to time. We took a very bombastic call, if you listen, from a man who was a boss of a company who told everybody that he liked to be honest and that was why he ran a successful business. But Anne and I, talking after the chat with him, decided that he wasn't so much honest as plain blunt. But there's another aspect to all of this, and that is that I think I probably know the dialogue to all 13 Faulty Towers episodes more comprehensively than anybody in London. So if you, if you, if you like me, discover that television is so boring that sometimes you put on the Faulty Towers that you know verbatim anyway, and still laugh at it, and you can do... What's the, what's the best episode? And what's the best joke? 0171-412-1152. So we're talking about ugliness and honesty and the media and faulty towers. And why didn't they make a movie? Between now and 10 o'clock, 9 and 10 o'clock, this is the part of the breakfast show where we just reflect the fact that now's a good time just to relax, put your feet up, make a cup of coffee, uh, draw up a chair, you know, and we'll just uh, jaw, jaw, jaw. Oh, by the way, Therese Birch is going to be sitting in for Steve Allen and she'll be here at uh, 5 to 10 to tell us what she's got lined up for us. And don't forget that Simon Bates 
is drive timing between four and seven here on LBC with Peter Dealey having a break. It's coming up to quarter past nine. We're in a minute. Okay, we, uh, we've decided to stitch together our high-tech Faulty Towers quiz. The first one is an animal, and you have to identify the animal from the line of dialogue. Okay? Unfortunately, we don't have a bleep, so I'll go bleep. Do you really think that a woman like that will be interested in a brilliantine bleep like you? 0171-412-1152. Let's talk to Patrick, who's calling from Fulham. Good morning, Patrick. Welcome to LBC. Good morning to you, sir. Um, I'd just like to know, because someone give me some, some answer, why are they spending all this money on Jill Dando, the police? I can't believe all this money is being spent on one lady. All right, I know she's a celebrity, but come on, I mean... Let's get something straight. They're going to bring these experts in now so we understand. I, I worked three, three turns away from where this murder was actually performed. And I, I, I know for a fact this, is ne this guy's never going to be caught. We all know this because it was done by an expert. And I come from Tower Amulets. Two years ago, Tommy, an old age pension couple, about 80 years ago, I don't you heard of it, got murdered. Hmm? Nothing was done about these two old people. They'd never been been brought to, to buck about this and I just don't know why the police spend all this money on one lady. Can you tell me, Tommy? Or someone tell me. Well, um, let, what you have here, uh, Patrick, is, is a set of perceptions. Um, and your perception is that a great deal more money is being spent pursuing her murderer because she's a public figure. Yeah. Than, for example, was spent pursuing the killer of Rachel Nichol, who was murdered on Wimbledon Common. Correct. And yet I would suspect you would be wrong. It's only that, at the moment in particular, more television pictures are transmitted showing large numbers of police officers which, uh, investigating the case, were converted into pounds, shillings and pence. Yeah. Which is what we do. Yeah, I understand that. Which is what we do. Um, so it, it may be, and I, I suspect this is the case, it, it may be that not a great deal more is being spent on this case than, than on any other case where a single successful woman was murdered in, in brutal and very mysterious circumstances. Yeah, I, I can understand that, Tommy, but don't you think, I mean, if you look into it, I, I, I really, really think that they're spending far too much money, and here it is again, this class thing again, where someone's got money and they're trying to get the killer, and where a per person like myself gets murdered tomorrow, they have a couple of goes trying to get someone to fall it and that's the end of it. It's just put to one side. I don't believe this. I think they're, they're spending far, far too much money, far too many policemen in this, on this, and they're bringing these experts and another lot of money on top, and who's paying for it? Me and you. I think it's wrong. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, no, hang on. I mean, that, that's your case, all right, but let me pin you down, Patrick, because, you, you know, you, you don't know what the cost is. No, I don't know what the cost is, Tommy. And whatever the police would have been doing instead of investigating the Jill Dando killer, they'd have been investigating another crime. Yeah, I, I, I understand that. As long as they're being brought in from their holiday relief, although I wouldn't be surprised that the, the extraordinary week when Jill Dando was murdered and nail bombs were going on, off in London, that an awful lot of policemen were asked if they would work through the weekend, so certainly that did cost the public. Yeah, but what are you going to do? I know, I, yeah, I... You're going to say we'll give ourselves 48 hours to catch the thief and if that ha it doesn't get done then we'll go back to traffic no, control? No, you, you, you decide with these cases like every other case. I mean, that old... Pa I don't know if you remember that old couple in Beth Bethnal Green Road who got murdered. Do you remember it? No. Well, it was two years ago. It was in the main, main papers. But it was in the main, like the Daddy Miller place, it was in a small little piece at the bottom, but in the main papers it was the headline. But they ne after a couple of months, they'd done that. We had a big meeting a few weeks ago, and we were stopping people in the street. I was one of the guys down at Elpenu to try to do something to get the police interested in this yeah, murder. But you see, you'd have to explain to us, you'd have to explain to us why you are particularly concerned about this case. I'm, I'm, I'm interested because the, the amount of time that's going into this case for one person. No, but you'd have to tell us why you're particularly interested in the case of the old, old couple in Tower Hamlet. Because I live in the East End of London. I, I live where the all these people live. Mm. And because this old couple have got no money, they're not up with the high society, it's not being looked into like this one's being looked into. We know, I know that for a fact. We've got people out on the streets the other Saturday. We had a big thing up in, in Bethnal Green trying to get people interested in it. And it's just, it's complete rubbish, this thing of Danny, what's going on in Fulham. All these police and all this, get, trying to get this Jill, Jill Dando's murder. I think it should be done like everybody else. 
I think there's far, far too many policemen being involved in Jim Dan Jill Dando's murder, and not enough in uh, the only class people who get murdered every day. That's what I'm saying, Tommy. One law for the rich, one law for the poor. It doesn't really compute, does it? It doesn't really work. I can't see that argument. I can see that you've got a bee in your bonnet about the, the elderly couple who were murdered in Tower Hamlets, and, and, and good luck to you and, and good work for you for keeping that going. But then what is your motive for doing that? My motive is to get justice for everybody in the country, not just for one. That's my, that's my motive. Ah, well then, would you take police officers away from the Jill Dando Yes, I would. And put them I, on... I, these people, these experts. What a lot of rubbish, bringing experts in. Can't the police already doing it, get on with the job and let them do it? Bringing experts in at extra expense? That's what they're doing, being extra experts, come on. You see, but you, yeah, but with the greatest of respect, you remind me about somebody who wrote to the um, BBC when Bruce Forsyth used to do the Generation Game and say that the re said that the reason that the costs of um, their licence was going up was because they gave away so many fancy prizes on the conveyor belt. Now, you've heard that a couple of experts allegedly are being grafted in to refresh the case. The cost of that is, is effectively non-existent. Well, according to the Daily Mirror yesterday, I think it was Daily, yeah, Daily Mirror yesterday, these, these so-called experts are on £20 an hour. I mean, is that wrong? Is that untrue? Is the Daily Mirror saying it's not? But they're saying well, they were paying £20 an hour. Probably yes to all of the things that you, you question. But on the other hand, don't we like to believe things like that? I, I, I do it, know it, Tommy. If it, if it fuels our indignation. Oh, I wish someone would phone you from the East End who's, who's actually in, into this thing about the murders that have gone on in the East End. And, I wish someone... But why, I mean, look, why, why, why can't you let it go? I can't let it go. Why, no, why all, can't you let it go? Because of all the, all the money that's being spent... No, but why can't you let it go? I've known three people in my life being murdered, and none of the murders have ever been solved, but I'd let it go. Yeah, I'll patch you out, Tommy, but when you live in a close community like I live... I live in a perfectly close community, thank you very much indeed. I'm not out at the end of Dartmoor. Yeah, but the East End is a lot more close than where you live, Tommy. The East End is a thing. Really you you pull, you're pulling flat cap on me now. I hate it when people pull flat cap on me. No, it's not. I'm not I, come, I come from Hounslow and Felton, mate, and that yeah, is just well, as quiet as a community. That's a bit different than the East End of London. Come on. Yeah, you see, you, you, this, is, you, this is what you're doing here now. You're being East End against the rest. No, I'm not being East End, Tommy. What I'm trying to say is that I, I live in the East End. We are, we are looked on as nothing. We're looked on as a rough. Okay, we may be the rough, but I tell you what, we've got family values in the, in the East End of London, and we're trying to get to the bottom of the murders that's gone on there with this old couple. All right, stay with us, Patrick. Someone wants to talk on this one. Okay. 1152 This is LBC. I'm Tommy Boyd. <laughs> we've got Patrick in Fulham, who's on the line, who says that we're spending too much money trying, because we'll never succeed, but anyway, to catch the killer of Jill Dando, and Marina's called... From Ryslip. Marina, you're through and Patrick's listening. What do you want to say to him? Well, Tommy, I just can't believe what Patrick said. Is he mad? How many people are assassinated on their doorstep like Jill was? I mean, we're all horrified at this and we can't wait to find out that, um, who did it and to, to, well, to put him away for life. And there's Patrick saying that we're spending, wasting our money on it. I just can't believe it. Patrick, you're mad. Yeah, well, she may think I'm mad, but she, don't, she doesn't know the old age pension couple who got murdered in the East End. There's nothing, nothing being done about it. Now, she may call me mad, but there's far too much money being spent on people like this who get murdered, especially rich people, and nothing being done to people, working class people, may I say, in the East End of London. Not just the East End, most of London. And this old couple who got murdered there, there is, this is two years ago, murdered on their own front doorstep. Nothing been done. Now, come on, let's have some, let's have some straight talking on this. Uh, Tommy, may I say, I, I appreciate well, what no, Patrick talk, 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 No, stop talking to me, you two. Talk to each other. You, oh, you're the one who's having the argument. Oh, I'm, sorry, I didn't realise I was going to talk to me, love. I don't mind talking to you, but I'll tell you something, I'm not mad. I mean, you're, you're talking about money being spent. This money is far, far too excess to be spent on Jill Dando. Uh, pa Patrick, I appreciate what you're saying. We all appreciate what you're saying. And we all feel bad about the couple and everyone else who's ever murdered in this did, world. Did you know about this couple? But, well, I'm sure that the police are still looking in. No, no, no. Can I tell you something? I'm sure it's they been are. Stopped. It's been stopped. It's been stopped investing, and there's hardly anybody on it at all. And if you'd have known this couple... No, so how do you know this? Don't you realise that the police work undercover? They don't... Marie, Marie, come on, come on. Let's get something straight. This, this Jill Dando is far, far no, too much money. No, for. no, no. Not when she was shot down like that for no reason. Listen. Well, we you the couple. Oh, listen, 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 now, Maria. What about the whole couple that was cut? Yeah, I appreciate... They were murdered. I, we, 
<coughs> excuse me, I feel very sorry, and I'm sure everybody else does for them, but their case is not closed. Patrick, you don't know it that has been, is listen, listen, listen Maria, it has working. been closed because it's over two years old, it's been closed, love. Why don't you just but listen, investigate Patrick, it? Jill was only murdered two weeks ago, and oh, we're all still I'm reeling sure from that shot. Don't kill you, how much you going to... you might be, listen, Maria, you might be reeling I from it, but I'm not reeling from it. I speak for millions of others, there's not one person who we don't know who hasn't. We, well, who never stops mentioning that. Come in to well, what about the news, Dougie? I don't know what we're going to do because they're going at it. Oh, yeah, right. no, no, I can't really talk to you though. because it's right. like, it's I like, you've got a one to make your mind. I can't talk to you because you've got something. Excuse me, excuse me. Yeah, go okay, on. Tommy. No, no, excuse you me. stay there, you two, because we haven't resolved anything yet. I've got Douglas Cameron, he's such a polite man. As legends are, um, if you could just um, keep your powder dry, you two, for a second, and we'll see whether we can resolve it uh, after we've had the news from the one and only Douglas Cameron. This is uh, LBC. It's half past nine. When stimulate... 0171-412-1152. Yes, we've got a complex moral debate which is running between two callers, Patrick in Fulham and Marina in Ryslip, over uh, police investigation procedures. And Marina, you'd reached the point where you were justifying your argument that Patrick is mad. Well, yes, because um, what I don't understand, Tommy, is that Jill was only um, gunned down a fortnight ago, and I mean, everybody is still reeling from the shock. Why isn't Patrick? And does he really expect the police to just pack up now and go away from this? It could happen to anyone. Patrick. Yes, I'm not reeling from the shock. I'm reeling from the ex expense that's going into one criminal MM and, and nothing going into the other one. We all oh, pay no the same tax. Can you listen, Marie? We all pay the same council tax. We all pay to pay for the policeman's Well we'll pay for the pay the same policeman's um wages, don't we? Yeah, I agree there. So I agree. why shouldn't we get the same justice? Well look, you don't know what's happening with I all do those know. Can you know as well as I do? No, I don't. I don't. No, I don't. And I, I, I tell you, I just can't understand. You don't oh, know the no. person who's doing the way you're carrying on about, Jill. No, you want to get with the real world. No, never mind about Who do you? You do too. Because you have no idea what's happening with those other murders. The police never let up. Look about that, uh, um, I can't think of the name of it now, the little girl and, and her mother who were killed, Megan, whatever. Nothing went into it, Maria, as much as went into oh, it yes. in two weeks. Oh, you know that. My goodness, they never let up on that. Oh, and you know as well as I do, they did. They give up in the end. Oh, no, they did. Well, they found the killer, didn't uh, they? So, I mean, wasn't it a good thing that they did keep going listen, with it? Listen, Maria, they will never, ever do for the working class people of this country what they do for the rich people. Oh, well, I, I, I don't care what... what Okay, Patrick, uh, Jill should never have been murdered. I mean, that was the most horrific thing that I've ever heard of. And, and as far as I'm concerned, I think you're crazy that you think that the police should call this whole thing off. I wonder if you'd be shouldn't. saying this. I wonder if you'd be saying found this. their killer. I wonder if you'd have been saying this if this was your mother and father who got murdered on their street door. I wonder if you'd have been saying that. No, Patrick, you would not, I would you? Do, I do appreciate what you're saying. I think and, and I would know, not be you're saying it because... Of yawn. Sorry? Your dando must be a personal friend of yours. No, I have never met the lady, but I have never You are most never seen people, you like most the person people, on the telly. You are like, like most people in this country, especially people with money. Well, have you? No, I've got a very busy and active life, yes, and I'm just have. ringing up because you were so incensed me about what you said about Jill Bando. A fortnight ago this happened, a fortnight ago. So what? How would you feel? Oh, well, look, let me put the question to you then. How would you feel if it was your sister? And I'm thinking how I would feel if it were my daughter. Or, or anyone associated to me, like anyone normal is thinking. I don't I think you're listening. I mean, can't you get it through your head? Oh, no, every murder is horrific, but this one stands out more because... Oh, but the, the old, girl, the, 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 the old people that got murdered, that doesn't stand out. They fought for this country when they was very young, I know this for a fact, and they fought very hard, and when they got to their old age, 80 years of age, they was murdered, and nothing was done. Well, right, so Patrick, just let me interrupt, in, interrupt you just for a second there. Yes, Marina, sir. you hang on for a second, too. 0171 1152, if you'd like to either make a comment to Patrick, or about Patrick's argument, or similarly, if you'd like to comment to Marina, or on Marina's point of view, or 0171 1152, who do you think's winning? 
Um, Marina, you can come back at what you just heard Patrick say. Yeah. Yes. Um, what? Well, I've lost your flow slightly. Uh, well, I, 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 did, I, I just can't I believe. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here and I just can't believe what he's saying. I mean, it's only two weeks, Tommy. And I mean, uh, perhaps it's because of Jill is so well known through the television. But I mean, no matter who's murdered, I, I agree with what uh, Patrick's saying about the, the old couple. Of course, nobody should be murdered. But I'm quite sure the police are still looking into that murder. All right, well, we're taking the early votes, Marina, and the, 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 just the dipstick poll looks as, it look, does look as though you're in the lead. Oh, thank you. Well, well, well I, I, don't know, I, don't, I don't know whether Patrick wants to uh, just refresh your case here, Patrick, because it could be that some of the invective and the passion and the temperature of, of the argument has uh, rather softened the focus on your main point. Yeah, perhaps so, Tommy, but if you, um, if you were to get all the calls from the East End of London, you'd find out I'd be 100% in front. Because the people in the East End of London are really adamant about this case that's been going on in the East End of London. And I, I, for one, are very annoyed. I can understand her saying that Jill Dando's murder has got to be, got to be, um, someone's got to do something. But the amount of expense to going into one case where this other couple was, they're not, not nowhere near the expense has gone into that. Mm. And we all you pay the same that, tax. Patrick. Patrick, you don't know how much expense went into that elderly couple. Can I murder. tell you something, Mary? I, I do know. know. I do know because murdered. I take a very, I take a very deep interest in this old couple because I live in the East End about. 200 yards and this old couple lived and I actually knew them. I, I can imagine this couple. how you feel, Patrick, and honestly, we all sympathise with you. I do. But you you can't say that we've got, that, that we've got to spend less on this murder. Jill Dando, you agree because that just think it could happen to any of us. There's a maniac out there with a gun. And it could happen to anybody. He might see somebody else walking along the street and go and murder them. You don't know, because we don't know why Jill was murdered. We don't know why that poor couple were murdered, who you know. But honestly, you cannot say that the police must spend less on this case. They have got to find that maniac. They've right. just got to. Now listen, Marina and Patrick, um, it, it's really interesting hearing your views about a whole range of top topics. Uh, so go and sit on your stool in the corner and just take take three minutes and and, um, and uh, wash your mouth and spit spit into the bucket and things and we'll and we'll um, allow you perhaps to, to offer your conclusions, if you, as it were, the concluding arguments in just a moment. But I think uh, I have to say that Patrick is making an interesting point, one that doesn't get talked about very often, and and that is whether the police do try harder in certain cases to track down the villain, and it could be the media, and Patrick's point, it has to do with class, and I think the point that Patrick hasn't made, but he might like to, is that it can have to do with the ages of the victims. 0171412 So, bags of issues. Oh ho! Oh ho! R issue rich! But who's winning? Patrick or Marina? Patrick was arguing that too much money is being spent pursuing the killer of Jill Dando when there are other unsolved murders which in many ways are more meritorious. And Marina was saying that fundamentally he's mad and it concerns everybody and it was a shocking event and uh, it should be pursued insofar and as much as society can afford it. We've let those two uh, folk go because we thought we'd take as much reaction to much, as much exegesis to their epigrammatical complications as possible. 0171 1152. Kevin calls from New Cross. Kevin. Hello, Tommy. Hi. Uh, nice to talk to you again. Um, basically, I just think patronage is bumps felt, basically. I mean, this case, Jill Nando, is a high-profile case. It's in the media. It's all over the papers. And obviously, we all want to find out who the hell did it. It's not to say that because you're not famous and, as Patrick said, you've not got money, that the police are still not going to be looking into it. We, he cannot possibly say that he knows how much money is spent on an individual case, because all the a lot of work is done behind the scenes, getting experts in, and I've got times where he got his figures from. Perhaps it's not, they are not celebrities, the old couple in Bethlehem. My f a friend of mine, Tommy, was murdered about ten years ago in a shop over a credit card, and the police moved heaven and earth to try and find this guy, and they caught him in the end. Mm -hmm. It's only been a couple of weeks since her murder, and it's a, a couple of months, he said, they spent on this other couple. He doesn't know what money was spent on it and 
how on earth he got his figures from, I don't know. I mean, she's a, Jill Dern has a high-profile case, and I damn well want to see catch it, because everybody is reading from this. And I, I think, basically, it's, it's very ignorant to sit there and say that he's anything else, basically. So, I mean, Kevin disagrees with Patrick, who he thinks is ignorant of the facts. Kevin, stay with us, because John has called from Whitechapel. I've got a feeling the whole thing may turn out to be, a, be geopolitical. John, do you uh, disagree or agree with Patrick? Uh, I, well, I, I agree with what he's saying, but I think, I think that, um, you know, they could have, they could have, um, they could have actually put some more into, you know, the fact that, you know, that young kid was killed at the end of the day. You know, just because Joe Dander was killed and she lives in West London and, and all that, you know, I mean, they, they got a foot of it within two days. They had all that information about the young kid in East London. They could have got those five guys, you know. And I just think, I just think it's a, it's a, it's a fact that people, just because she's higher profile, and uh, she, you know, she, she think, uh, and people think that it's affecting them. It didn't affect me at all. I just think, you know, okay, she was killed. It's a fact of life. It's not an East London, West London thing we're getting uh, into no, here. I'm no, a bit worried about that because I'd be surprised. I'd be frightened about that. It, it, it doesn't, but you know, that East London, West London thing doesn't bother me. It doesn't interest me in the least. Kevin, do you want to come back at John? Anything you've heard him say? Well, basically, I just still think it doesn't matter where you live, Tommy, basically. If someone gets murdered, it, it, the bottom line here is there's a lot of things that we don't know what goes on with the police, but the things are being looked into and how much money you spent. And we all like to think that the same amount of money would be spent on all of us. And it may be a fact that life is cases, there may be more money spent on some cases than others, purely because of the information that's there and the, the, the capability to be able to catch these people. Well, there, there was no information at all whatsoever on Joe Dando. There was people telling, there was, there was people telling the police in, 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 East Lon in, in, Felton, in East London where that kid was killed that they knew exactly who the guys were. So why come the police didn't go and arrest someone like that? Well, do we know uh -huh. facts on the case? Uh -huh. The whole fact. You know, you're, you're, you're telling me that... It's only pure you, speculation, you, isn't it? You're, people, you're telling me that people didn't know who killed Joe Dando. People knew exactly who killed that what, that kid, right? That that black kid. They knew exactly who it was, and then the police didn't move in it. But it was actually pressure by, 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 by people in London, right, that made the police go, go and actually have a look at into it. And they, I still don't believe it. I mean, those kids, that, that kid's parents, I mean, look, look at him, uh, uh, Neville Lawrence and all that, right? That geese must have gone through hell to try and get some justice. John in Whitechapel, thank you for your call. And Kevin also, thank you for calling. 0171 412 1152. Robert calls now from Barnet on the uh, Patrick Marina affair. Robert, you're on LBC. Oh, good morning, Tommy. Yeah, I mean, I agree with Patrick, but I don't see why he's getting so aerated. I mean, it's just a fact of life that the cops will spend more money on Jill Downey because she's a celebrity, she, she had more influential friends. You know, if, the, if some big guy in the BBC governors or whatever gets onto them and whatever, you know, it's going to make more difference than, than a guy like Patrick who, who they're just going to ignore because, you know, he's just some poor... He's dead. It's, it's just a fact of life, man. Everybody knows that. What's the big deal? All right. Robert says to Patrick, cool down. It's a fact of life. You've got to go with the flow. Twig on the back of a stream. Barbara's in Epping. What do you say, Barbara? Good morning, Tommy. I'm feeling over Patrick. I really am. I mean, first of all, it is not true to say that they spend more money when it's a public figure. You've only got to look at the Stephen Lawrence case. I mean, he wasn't famous. And look at the publicity he got. I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous. And it's a cut and dried thing. Somebody has committed murder and the police... As Mary said, uh, Marina said, they have got to keep at it until they find the killer. Mm. I mean, they may not, but they've got to do everything within their power to find that person. Mm. And, you know, it's, there's, there's just nothing else to it. They've got to do that. I think I agree with you. You're very persuasive. It's all very well saying that not so much publicity and not so much money would have been poured on the case if Jill Dando had been an elderly East End lady. But, and, 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 but you could then go on to say, well, yeah, but... But, but not so much money would have been spent on JFK's assassination if he'd been a petrol pump attendant in Milwaukee. That's right. I mean, if somebody... He that, wasn't. Exactly. So if somebody that Patrick knew was killed in a few weeks' time, would he then ring you up and say the same thing? That the police shouldn't have pushed it so hard if, if for, for instance, that person murdered somebody he knew in a few weeks' time? I wonder if he'd be ringing you up and saying that then. Thanks for your call, Barbara, and I think Liz is in Kent. Liz, what do you say? Hi, I mean, if we're honest, um, the buck stops with us, really, isn't it? The public. I mean, um, we uh, we make uh, Jordando into um, the figure that she is, and it's our interest that keeps it alive. And if um, we didn't have so much interest in her, there wouldn't be so much done, I wouldn't have thought. Mm. So really, it's us that's that, that, um, making it all happen. 
you, you can keep the angst I'm not going to blame myself. Um, but you want to blame society, humanity. Joan and Clapton, you get the last word on this one. What do you say? Yeah, hello. I mean, I agree with Patrick, basically. <laughs> Just say that. Yeah? Mm, totally okay. agree with him. All right. Mm. All right, time All right, to bye. go home. Uh? Okay, nice one. Yeah. Bye. The, um, the <laughs> breathtakingly gorgeous Therese Birch uh, joins me in the studio because uh, she's going to be looking after Steve Allen's programme for today. How are you? I'm very well. Poor old Steve's got a bit of a cold and a cough and whatever. So okay. uh, I am sitting in as opposed to standing in which you've been... Well, you've been standing anyway. Not since six o'clock though, surely. Well, I get up and down, as you yeah. do. All right. Yeah. Just stretch the pins. But it's partly that. It's partly that. I, I just also, um... Uh... Can I, I don't like sitting down, really. Do you like yeah. sitting down? Why do you yeah. broadcast sitting down? Much more calm. I sit down for everything if I possibly can. <laughs> I see your point there. <laughs> but I'm not prepared to elaborate on that. Shall I tell you what's going to be happening after 10 o'clock? Oh, no, but it's very, it's, it's a very, uh... <laughs> changing the subject rapidly. Arresting thought, one which I'm not going to be able to get past. <laughs> the whole of my drive home listening to you. All right. Well, tell me what you think about tourist traps, because that's going to be one of our nominated subjects this morning. We want people to nominate, um, the best and the worst. Of tourist attractions and mm. family days out and things. Mm. Where have mm. you been ripped off? What's really good value for money? What's really entertaining for young kids? That mm. sort of thing. Mm. So that's one of the things we'll be looking at in open line. We've got our health hour after 11 o'clock with Rob Hicks and Annie Riley as well. One of the things we'll be looking at is a cure for baldness. Mm. And finally, in the final hour between 12 and 1, Diane Burstein, an armchair walk around London. Really looking forward to that. Mm. Lovely. So you sit down for everything if you can. Everything that I possibly can, Tommy. I'll tell you more during the news, sir.